Hello everyone, welcome to the Ozone. Today I have some really interesting news concerning the next Fazbear Frights book, the seventh book in the series called The Cliffs. Um, and this will be the seventh book, as I just said, to come out the series, adding three more stories. One of them is called The Cliffs, the second one is called Breaking Wheel, and the third is called He Told Me Everything. Recently we also got some news that there's not just going to be another two books after that, but there's also going to be a tenth book that is called Friendly Face, and an eleventh book which we don't have the name of yet. It really makes you question how, how far Scott is going to go with this series. It all started with just five books, uh, and, and he has done over double that since um, the end of 2019. Perhaps the most interesting news we have had, however, has been this list um, of common key terms and phrases that are going to be in this book, and it is scary. So here is just a friendly reminder to subscribe to the channel. I put a lot of effort into my videos and all I ask is that you click one button so that I can create more awesome content and you can see when I create it. If I can get to 10k by this summer, I will hand on heart, touch wood, <laughs> make a full updated and unbiased FNAF timeline video and believe me, you do not want to miss out on that. Okay, back to the cliffs. The list consists of 121 words that are frequently used in the book. That is all three stories, not just one. The larger the word is, um, the more it appears, the more frequent it is in the book. Although we don't know how much of these words tie together and which stories are connected to which words, they do tell us a lot about what can we about what we can expect about what we can expect in the book to come. Some of the terms are uh, very interesting and could provide some lore that we might see from the book. So in the synopsis of the book, the first story, The Cliffs, seems to be about a boy named Reed who sees an opportunity to teach the school bully not to mess with him, but ends up mangling the lesson. This doesn't give us a lot to work with, but seeing as the story is called The Cliffs, and one of the terms in this word bubble is cliffs. It sounds as though the opportunity Reed will take or the lesson he will learn has got something to do with a cliff. Um, remember the front cover of the book uh, also is connected to this first story. Um, so it could be metaphorical that someone like falls to their death from cliffs. Or it could be where the Freddy's aspect comes in. Um, the Five Nights at Freddy's aspect comes into story because, you know, it is a Five Nights at Freddy's story. <laughs> I find it strange that um, cliffs uh, in this word cloud is um, has a capital letter. Um, so it's possible that it is a proper noun or part of the name for the cliffs, um, or of an actual cliff side. Um, I, I, I do see Billings up there as well, Billings with a capital letter. Billings, which is also a common uh, term, is a city in Montana that one of the stories will take place in. Um, and there is a cliffside in Billings called Sacrifice Cliff, uh, which could be a hint to there being some sort of sacrifice in the story, but um, I am unsure. Um, I do believe this is just a coincidence. I think it's a really big stretch. Um, <laughs> the fact that we've taken the city from one of the stories and the fact that there's cliffs there and found Sacrifice Cliffs. Um, I wonder if that was intentional, but I don't think it will be. I think it will just be completely different to that. Anyway, that's something to point out. The second story, Breaking Wheel, uh, is about Robert, an exhausted single father who gets a crash course in parenting when he buys a fancy new teddy bear to watch and entertain his young son. The title to this story is so spine-chilling. When you, when you research it. According to Wikipedia, the breaking wheel, or the execution wheel, was a, uh, was a torture method used for public execution through the Middle Ages by breaking the bones of a criminal and bludgeoning him or her to death. What? Mix this with a story about an irresponsible father and his son, and you can already tell this is going to be the creepy story of the book again. 
And I, I will say, just off the bat, all of the second stories in each of the books are always the creepiest ones. Um, so, this sounds like it's going to be good. Sounds like there's going to be a lot of content. As far as the name of the sun is concerned, there are a lot of names in this word cloud, such as Gerard, Josh, Julius, Kyle, and Shelley. But these names could be uh, a lot of other characters too. Um, personally, uh, I feel like this this story is going to take place primarily in the house of the father. Um, and that's when we'll see some more words come into play, such as, you know, remote and window and stuff like that. I know they're very minor details, but I feel like this is going to be a very, kind of an isolated story, if you know what I mean. And finally, what you're here for. The most exciting story is He Told Me Everything. Before reading the description, the title probably says it's going to be some sort of secrecy theme here in this story. So the story is about Chris, eager to join the science club at school, who agrees to undergo a grisly, grisly, <laughs> grisly experiment to be accepted. This makes sense as some of the key terms that we, that we see in the word cloud are science, club, and experiment. So that makes sense that all of those are there. Um, and th they are all talked about a lot, but one thing I would like to point out is the choice of the name Chris. Now, we know that Scott loves to troll us <laughs> every now and then, but this name worries me. Another common name in the book is Afton. And although this could just be part of the Stitch Wraith story again, um, it really worries me because, you know... <laughs> we know in the FNAF community that for some strange reason, I have no idea why this exists, but a lot of people in the theorist community believe that the name of the crying child in FNAF 4 is Chris Afton. We still have no confirmed name for this child, and we don't know if, if Scott has put any names out there for the child yet, or if he's just waiting um, to kind of reveal it sometime soon. But, but Scott has the potential to make Chris Afton actually canon. Do I think he will? Absolutely not. The first thing I'd like to note is that the stories aren't entirely canon to the main games. Um, and Scott, nine times out of ten, will not use the name of the actual character in the story in the parallel universe. So what I mean is, when we draw parallels, we're not usually taking the names from the Fazbear Frights book and using those names in the timeline. There is one exception, of course, Susie in Coming Home uh, is the same Susie as Susie in the Missing Children's incident. So, you know, we, we there may be some exceptions, but I really don't think that Scott is going to put Chris Afton uh, in this story. <laughs> Although I would love to know the canon name for the crying child, I don't think he will hand it to us that easily either, and therefore I don't think the appearance of both Chris and Afton in this word bubble should worry us too much. So just to end the video really, I would like to make some honourable word mentions. Firstly we have the word metal, and for obvious reasons this instantly takes my mind to, to be beautiful, uh, and although Scott can't just do the same plot twice, it, it, it the fact that metal is used a lot in, in the book kind of scares me. There's also frequent mentions of random body parts, such as arms, nose, uh, and, and really weirdly tooth. I'd also like to point out how big the words pickle and pickles are, and how this creates a possible connection to Pizzeria Simulator with the jar of pickles, and also Rick and Morty with Pickle Rick. <laughs> anyway, that is it for today's theory video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!